So what we have here is ferrets and the flock of seagulls. We're going to put Ferris here, and he's going to be pretty happy next to the the birds here. Who's this guy? Oh, that's me. Yeah. Put some drop shadow, uh, outline, save that, and there we go. Hi, I'm Cameron Manavian, and this is another Code Jam. In this video, we're going to recreate the artificial life program Boyd's created by Craig Reynolds in Rust. I found a great representation of it in JavaScript using Canvas in the browser. So we're going to convert this into Rust and use some popular game engines. The Boyd's algorithm has been used in movies such as Batman and Tron, as well as Lord of the Rings, and uh, among many other types of movies that require large bodies of movement from groups of animals or people. It's a pretty simple algorithm, but today we're going to try to build it out very quickly by copy pasting a bunch of JavaScript and recreating it in Rust with some types and some memory safe functionality. So using the reference from JavaScript, I'm going to create each little part as a module in Rust, starting with the vector. And the vector just has a dimension of X and a dimension of Y for a given object. I wrote some unit tests here just to make sure that I understand that the code's cr copied correctly from JavaScript, because this is the core underlying functionality of the Boyd's program that objects can move, and that their ang angles and rotations can be modified or measured against other vectors. So I wrote unit tests there just to make sure. And then there's another thing called the point, which is the point in, a, uh, in place of our current bird. So it's much like the vector we just wrote, Slightly different different functionality, but the unit test can almost be copy-pasted for some of it. Again, this is all based off of JavaScript. So if you see on the right side here, I have the JavaScript reference function, and I'm just essentially translating it. Next, we create the, the Boyd module, which is a representation of the bird object within the program. It allows our application to find a bird and talk to it directly as an instance of a bird. And it kind of has references to its own vector and point, because it, after all, is moving and has a location at all times, so it has its own vector and point. And then the bird is in charge of moving itself when given a step command. So we have the step function here that takes its uh, other birds that are neighbors and computes different things based on the artificial life program rules created by Craig Reynolds, which results in a final movement of the bird, and also a heading or direction of the bird to, to face. Finally, this would typically be inside your video game as the game controller, but for this project, I wanted to create a world controller outside of a given game engine. So I created this world module, which kind of handles the, the, all the birds within the program and communicates with them in terms of their next steps during a fixed update, or rather, every time the game loops, it'll tell the birds to loop as well on a fixed update schedule. And also helps to find the neighbors of each bird so that we don't have to have the birds do that themselves. This is kind of useful because it, all of this is written directly in pure Rust with no engine whatsoever. So we can actually make this pretty portable. This could also be used with the Godot game engine if we wanted to, or directly in Canvas if we convert it to WebAssembly. Now finally, I'm going to add a game engine. So the first one is Piston. Piston describes itself as a game engine focus on user friendliness and it really is user friendly it's very easy to set up a game and create the window and add objects to the window and animate them or direct them with different kinds of tools like a polygon so I think it's actually been a really good experience with piston I really enjoyed how easy it was to just create a simple loop in the game and render objects on a timely manner obviously I had to figure out how piston worked in different ways but 
the work I did in Piston really helped inform the rest of the games really quickly because it was kind of the first hump of getting my Boyd's engine working with a UI. Um, I finally got Piston to work, but then I realized that the birds were f floating in the wrong direction. But luckily I did some math here and realized that I had my rotation math a little wrong. So I fixed that, and this was just a f simple inverted issue. So here's the Boyd's algorithm running on Piston. I thought it came out pretty good. The, I made these little uh, polygons that look like little birds, kind of. Little triangles with wings. And I thought they came out pretty well. Overall, I was pretty happy with it. Next, I moved on to Tetra. Tetra is also a great Rust engine, but it's purely focused on 2D. Tetra is inspired by XNA, and it's basically designed for 2D rendering using OpenGL. It's very easy to set up input polling and have sprite sheets, and I found it to be easy to set up as well. Essentially, there's a concept of game state, which is slightly different than Piston, but I was able to copy a lot of my Piston code that I wrote and just rename things to be Tetra friendly. Of course, there was a couple issues that I had to modify in terms of the versions of Tetra, but got it working fairly easily without much effort. There were some issues though where I didn't realize that my shapes were white and the background was white, so I couldn't actually get things to show up. So I finally did some debugging, realized that I need to change the color of things. And then I got to task about going from circle birds to polygon lines just like I did on Piston. This was a little harder than Piston because I had to go through their docs a little bit more on Tetra to figure out exactly how they wanted me to draw things. And then once I got the shapes drawn, I ran into another issue, which you'll see very soon. And that was basically that I got these great polygons drawn, but they weren't rotated. So I didn't really know what to do here because I worked pretty hard on getting the shapes drawn in the first place, and then they weren't rotated. And I found out that I was having, I had to use a different way to make them rotate, and I was a little perturbed by that. But anyways, I got it working, had to rewrite the code again to use a different form of creating a polygon. And found out the way to rotate it properly. And finally got it to work the way we expected it to, just like we did on Piston. They had these draw params. So here you go. This was the, the final product with Tetra using my Rust Boyd's li Artificial Life program using the Tetra 2D game engine. I thought it also came out really well. Next on our list is Amethyst, which is a little harder to get installed and up and running. Uh, Amethyst is using an entity component system and it's great for 2D or 3D games. And it also has a lot of great support for data-driven type games. So to, with that in mind, I was going to try to use some sprites, namely a bird, to create a better version of this Boyd's uh, visualization. But with uh, Amethyst comes a lot of features to configure and different files and config files. So I had to start by getting Amethyst working, which involved me switching versions of Rust to older version and then switch into the latest version, and then using a branch of Amethyst. And then I kind of got it working, but the game kept crashing. I obviously got frustrated after a while, but first I had to get it all set up. So there's a lot of things called bundles, which you also see in Bevy, and it's their way of kind of making a modular data-driven version of game building. I thought this was great. It's really under interesting to build out your game with bundles and kind of add things piecemeal as you need them. But obviously I had to change versions of Rust just to get things working. And I thought that was a little, a little bit lame because I was happy with my new version of Rust. It didn't actually work though. So I went through all these different uh, GitHub issues and versions of Rust and versions of Amethyst and code mods and all that stuff and gave it the good old college try. Even went through their docs quite a bit. Got the code looking like it should, 
and to compile. But when it came down to running, I still couldn't get the code to quite run. So with that being said, I was not successful at getting Amethyst to run properly with my Boyd's algorithm. Even though it looked like it, would, it should run and it compiled well, it just didn't work. And most of this was related to some Linux issues with Wayland, but also with the versions of Amethyst that were available. The next version of Amethyst has a lot of bug fixes, but it's not stable. The current version does not support a lot of features in new Rust. So there's just a lot of confusion. And you can see that in the community as well. I'm not trying to say it's a down thing for Amethyst, but it definitely made it harder for me to get working. Therefore, made it harder for me to showcase how great it is. I think it's a wonderful library, and I wish I could use it, but it just wasn't working. So I'm still trying to get it working at this point in my video, but as you'll see, after all this hard work that I've been doing for this engine, which you can see there's a lot of code I wrote, it just would not work. Error messages, here's the famous uh, crash thing. They have their final, final tracker for bugs on GitHub. But next time we'll use Git Amethyst. On to Bevy. So Bevy is also an internet component system. Uh, they have this great thread on the Amethyst community about Bevy, the elephant in the room. But Bevy, you can see here, has a lot of great tutorials that work out of the box. Lots of examples. I have to give them credit for making a lot of great examples on their GitHub repo. But with Bevy, we're basically starting over again, but it has a lot of similarities to Amethyst. Luckily, I was able to use my bird sprite and start with that at least. So we had something to go with from the Amethyst round. In this case, I had to kind of learn a little bit different tactics for getting Bevy installed because they have a couple different requirements that I didn't have on my computer. But the other thing about Bevy that was interesting is that they have a new version 0.5, which is available on the GitHub main branch. In this version, I'm just using 0.4. They have a similar concept to Amethyst where you can load in bundles of different types of systems or plugins to help add features to your games piecemeal. And I thought that was interesting because it allows you to kind of customize the performance and loading of your game. But it also makes it easier to visualize what you're actually adding to your game. Sometimes I feel like when I'm building things with Unity or even JavaScript, I'm just importing libraries and I'm like, what What am I bringing in here? What, why is this thing 400 megabytes all of a sudden? So with Amethyst and Bevy, it's great that you can kind of see line by line what you're bringing into the game for the most part. With Bevy, they have a, a, a thing called a sprite bundle, which automatically loads in images. It's pretty handy. I like how it's written and it it's, makes it useful to easily add in images. Whoa, that was my giant bird there. and Obviously, rotate them and size them the right size so that they look properly on the screen. Bevy is using a, a, its own version of an entity component system. Shines pretty well here because the way it works is very nice and user friendly. You can kind of just chain your commands together and add different types of entities to uh, the, a base entity or add different modifications to it. Uh, you have easy access to the transformation of the entities. So it makes it great for something like a Boyd's algorithm because I can easily find the transform on my bird and move it. Uh, they also have a great way of adding resources to the context. A lot of these other game engines, you kind of just create your own context above the loop, whereas inside Amethyst and Bevy, you're kind of forced to use their context system and add your external resources to the game so that it can manage them properly. And I thought that was great. So I'm just trying to get this all set up here and it's all very much like the other systems, but in uh, Bevy you can create a function that's called on a step or a fixed update. Here I'm trying to figure out their coordinate system so you can see that I'm having a little bit of issues because I didn't realize that they're the way their game's built, game engine's built that it's centered in the middle instead of a 2D style in some other engines. So all of my birds are in the top right quadrant of the screen. I didn't feel like fixing that for this video, 
So I just kind of left it alone. It looks kind of weird, but whatever. And then I have this really strange whirly bird issue where all my birds are spinning in circles rapidly. And that was because of the way I added the rotation code. So it was a uh, user generated bug, not nothing Bevy did. But I thought it was pretty interesting to show how crazy these birds spin around. They look like fidget spinners flying around or something. And I think that's what I would call MVP, MVP minimum viable product for Bevy. So here I get the flocking to work a little bit better. So now I'm going to build out release versions of each of these game engines using Cargo. Uh, again, I'm not going to include Amethyst because it didn't work properly. I also have to swap between the, the dependencies and the Cargo Tomble to get everything to build properly because there's conflicts with different versions of crates. So here's Piston. It looks really smooth. I think it came out really great. The birds are slightly transparent. They all look very well drawn. And I think it's all great. Tetra again, I thought looked pretty cool as well. The, the drawing looks a little off because I had to use a polygon tool that made a really thick border. I didn't really want to mess with it too much, but I thought it came out pretty well as well. And finally we have Bevy, which didn't quite work right out of the box because the assets of the sprite did not get copied over. But here I fixed it and we have our great fidget spinner birds flying around in pseudo flocks. The weird thing again is all these algorithms are still using the same underlying Rust algorithm, but they all look differently depending on the engine. So it's available on GitHub and you can grab the code anytime and do whatever you want with it. Enjoy.